In this video, I will be discussing Marcel Duchamp and his impact on the art world with the Dada movement. Some of the discussion points that will be covered in this video include the Dada movement as a whole, the biography of Marcel Duchamp and his influence that led to the emergence of Dada, and deep analysis of two of his works including Fresh Widow and To Be Looked At From The Other Side Of The Glass. The Dada Movement emerged from the catastrophic results of the Great War. Eight million were left dead, including both military personnel and civilian lives. The destruction remnant on European land was utterly destroyed, caused by new weaponry including submarines, artillery, and machine gun fire, and even trench warfare. In addition, economic and social status was completely devastated. Thus, in response, art was used to retaliate against these consequences that has been inflicted upon innocent civilians who had been caught in the turmoil of the political crossfire. The Dada movement emerged from a small group in Zurich who had all had the same visionary towards society, which was that it was degrading. In addition, these pre-visionaries opposed logic and scientific rationality, which they believed to degrade human society. Dada was referred as the anti-art movement that rejected all traditional conventions of art and reasoning. In fact, Dada in French means hobby horse. This movement differed from all other arts in the sense that it did not focus on aesthetics. Instead, it purely focused on the inner expression of the artist, regardless of the end product. The end justifies the meaning did not apply to Dada as it did with other arts. Marcel Duchamp, or Henry Robert Marcel Duchamp, from early life was destined to be an artist. Born in 1928, although his father was a notary, the Duchamp clan consisted entirely of artists. Their father was even a respected engraver. In 1904, Duchamp went to France and pursued a painting career. He made a myriad of paintings, cartoons for a few years, for comic magazines. He experienced several art trends that were popular at the time, including Impressionism, Fauvism, and Cubism. However, with all these experimenting, Duchamp could not find an attachment to any of these art trends. He even described Fauvism to be systematic or too boring. Duchamp was a creative, and he wanted to go beyond the restrictive art boundaries and traditions. So he did not create art for exhibitions, but rather for his own personal interest. It was in 1912 where Duchamp created his very first proud painting, known as The New Descending the Scarecase. He went to Munich to create more arts, just like this one, that was not traditional and rather very odd. However, at this time, artists were very criticized by the works that did not follow the trends of traditional art ways. And rather, his artwork was not seen positively until after the World War. It was a matter of two years later, after Duchamp created his new painting, where World War I broke out. Many European civilians and citizens had to drop for the war. However, Duchamp was exempt from service, but then this left him into a period of isolation. After the breakout of the war, Duchamp left France for the US, and when he arrived he was welcomed with open arms by American artists and media press. They all admired his new painting and offered him various jobs to create works for many of their exhibitions. However, Duchamp did not aspire to become a full-time painter and instead, he wanted to create unique artworks, rather ready means that started and inspired the Dada movement later on. With his ready means, Duchamp was considered to pioneer the Dada movement. Ready maids were procured objects of commonplace items, including advertising magazines and even other industrial consumer products. Duchamp, in reference to ready-mades, quote-unquote states, an ordinary object could be elevated to the dignity of a work of art by the mere choice of an artist. This was the initial and emergence of the conceptual artwork. 
work that serves in service of the mind rather than visual appeals. With this, Duchamp created a whole new attitude towards art and society in a non-negative way. Fresh Widow, created in 1920, was a miniature French window painted wood frame and panes of glass covered with black leather. Although Duchamp did not create this artwork personally himself, he hired a carpenter who he had guided. The title French Widow is a play on words of French window, which this structure is actually supposed to be portraying. Widow in this term is a tribute and a mockery of the widows of World War I. Obviously, this window is not functional because of its minuscule size and the fact that it's covered with black leather, obstructing any light that's coming through. The obstruction is supposed to represent how French widows, or just widows in general, are trying to block themselves or rather ashamed of the fact that they are ready to move on sexually as their husbands died in the World War I and they are trying to cover all their feelings within themselves. In addition, the blue rim coloring of the window is supposed to demonstrate the depression and sadness of the World War as the fact that blue is a typical representation of depression. In addition, it described the caption of this painting, it's written, Copyright Rosie Salabi 1920. Rosie Salabi is the name of Marcel Duchamp's feminine alter ego. And Rosa Salabi is actually a play on words as well for the French phrase Eros c'est la vie, meaning love that's life. The second artwork, created in 1918, is to be looked at from the other side of the glass. This work was created in Buenos Aires, Argentina, where Duchamp had fled after World War I. This painting consists of oil, silver leaf, lead wire, and magnifying glass, all encased in a glass encasement which had been cracked by spiderweb carvings as shown because of the rust preparation during the World War I after period. As the title or Duchamp describes it, it is intended to sound like an oculus prescription and the figures and all the excitement going on in the painting is supposed to be cruel to the viewer's eye. This artwork pokes fun at, the, at Leonardo da Vinci's Pyramid of Vision. Put yourself in a situation. Stand right in front of a mirror, cover your eye with one hand, and as you look around, you can see the geometric figures forming for itself. This is what is known as a classic phenomenon. Duchamp's brother, Howard, was so fascinated, fascinated by this work, and he would never stop talking about it, and Duchamp was rather sick of it. So to poke fun at this, Duchamp would create this work cross-eyed as a child would do. In this artwork, one interpretation, as we can look at it, is that on one side, we look through the other side as we judge. The other side is in fact a dimension that we have no association with, but rather it's something that we judge and look at, but really don't know what's going on. The magnifying glass, in fact, distorts the figures in the photo, which is supposed to signify how we don't know the whole truth and how we should think before judging. And the overall message conveyed in this work is that don't be rash in making decisions about others. Things don't appear the way it appears. Unique, witty, abstract, modern, creative, above all, revolutionary. Duchamp changed the meaning of not just art, but modern art in contemporary society which he brought in new attitudes towards art and society, which were all greatly appreciated after the war, but were severely criticized beforehand. <laughs>